if this sounds familiar, take me out to the ball game, or this, give my regards to Broadway, then you have this row of buildings to thank. They bustled from office to office and listening to each other's sounds that really created what is now the American Songbook. You may have heard of Tin Pan Alley, so named according to legend, after the sound of all the upright pianos that filled this row of light green townhouses on 28th Street. It was a key part of a songwriting district the city now considers landmarking prohibiting it from development. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my raccoon gal. But look at the cover of that popular song, and you see racist stereotypes in the imagery. These songs made racism socially acceptable. Attorney Ken Fisher represents developer Yair Levy, who wants to construct a high-rise here. Fisher brought out dozens of Tin Pan Alley sheet music, some so racially offensive we can't say the titles or show them on TV. Fisher says this is why preservation shouldn't happen. Every one of these five buildings published not one, not a handful, but dozens of these kinds of songs, particularly because it was their business model. These same songs were written by African American, uh, by African Americans and published by the first African American publishing uh, company, which was right here. There are two sides of an argument the Landmark Preservation Commission heard today. There is part of the history that is difficult. Um, designating landmarks allows us to learn from that history. Now I'll tell you this report containing many images like this and the n-word other racist epithets of dozens of works like this produced though out of hundreds and hundreds of songs that came out of Tin Pan Alley. So is it enough to stop the city from preserving these buildings? Well that'll be up to the commission to decide. It's expected to have a decision before the summer is over.